Hi everyone, I have a new toy. This is the InstaGo 2 64GB version, which is double the capacity of its uh, predecessor. Now, before I review this, I have to tell you this from the outset. As many of you know, I'm a TV cameraman for a living, but I am not going to review this with what looks as though it already could have a million and one general uses in the outside world because of its size. I'm only reviewing this um, purely and simply from a motor vlogger's perspective. So get your boots on and let's hit the road. And we begin. Okay, the instructions say if we take the camera out of the case, it can be mounted to any metal because it's also magnetic, which is ideal for a motorbike, right? So what's my bike made of then? And please don't answer that in the comments. But it is just as well, Insta have come out with this mount, which is one of a huge array of mounts they have for the Go 2. They claim this mount in particular will stick to any surface and you can reuse it as many times as you like, as long as you wash the back of it. So first of all, I'm gonna stick it to the tank and we'll try one of those Moto GP shots, shall we? Okay, this is a good start, and whilst it's not a 360 camera like its bigger sibling, the Insta360 ONE X2, it still has a huge amount of flexibility in post to adjust the camera angle in the edit, because even though this connects seamlessly with the Insta app on your phone to preview a shot, it's still a faff when you're suited and booted and you have gloves on and you just want to head off. OK, let's stick it to the windscreen now for a shot of me pretending to be Rossi. It's actually handling the contrast really well, considering it's looking up at the sky. Actually, now is probably the time for a quick tech talk. OK, this camera is unbelievably flexible for its size. What I mean by that is that you can once I've taken it out of the cradle, you can keep it in full auto mode just for the one tap record, or you can go into the app and set all of the parameters. You can play around with shutter speeds, exposure and colour modes. It has more professional features than I have, and there's even log mode for the know-it-alls, which allows you to colour grade the footage to make it look even more cinematic. There are huge possibilities with this, but again, from a motor vlogger's perspective, it's very, very user friendly and you can make it as simple or as detailed as you want. You can even program different buttons for different functions, but for ease of use when I'm on the bike, I have set every button up to start the camera with one tap and I'm keeping it in pro mode on every single button. Pro mode basically records the picture in a sphere. So essentially it captures all of the information which you can then select when you're editing the footage, either on your phone or in the free Insta app on your desktop, which is what I prefer because I can then just export those files straight into my editing software. Since we're here, I'll show you my favorite settings, which are pro mode, obviously, like I've said, um, 2.5K and I'm shooting in 50 frames on this footage. You can also set the camera up in the cradle without the app just to get going. The cradle also has its own Bluetooth so you can start and stop the camera if it's inaccessible to you. OK, let's get back to business. One great feature is that when you tap the front of the camera, which is really easy even with big gloves on, it vibrates quickly to let you know that the camera has started recording. When you tap it again to stop it recording, it vibrates for three seconds to let you know it's stopped. Now, why is that so good, I hear you say? Well, when you're wearing the helmet and the camera is on your chin, which let's face it, every motor vlogger in the universe does at some stage, you can feel the vibration inside the helmet. So whilst it doesn't have a little red flashing record light on it, you still know it's recording because of the vibration alert. Genius. If that's not enough, you can set a timer in the app for the camera to stop recording by itself. So if you're too busy to take your hands off the handlebars like this, 
This can be anything from 30 seconds to 30 minutes on the timer, but 30 minutes will certainly outlive the charge of the camera, which I'll come on to in a minute. OK, let's get back out on the road with the traditional chin mount. Talking of timings, the battery in the unit itself lasted only a maximum of 16 minutes and 10 seconds on its best test that I did, before needing a full charge again and back in its cradle, which took 26 minutes. So far, this is its biggest problem, but there are workarounds. The cradle is capable of four charges before itself needs a full recharge, a bit like a set of AirPods, although they last far longer, but you can purchase a USB mount for the camera, which keeps it charged as long as your power bank holds up. This 64 gig version, by the way, records a maximum of one hour and 40 minutes worth of footage before you have to dump the footage into your computer or send it wirelessly to your phone if you're out on the road, which I suspect could be another drawback, but it's also a good excuse to stop for lunch. I suspect that's one of the things Insta will be addressing if there's ever going to be a version 3. So if you're a motor vlogger who just sets everything to record before you set off for the day, then you have to change your way of shooting and discipline yourself to capture only the footage you need, which is the way I shoot anyway since I'm a dinosaur and was trained on film, which was crazy expensive. <laughs> This leads me on to my next point because I don't honestly think this camera would work solely as the main cam for motor vlogging. But where it does excel is as a B cam paired with its big brother, for example, the One X2. This isn't just because of the reasons I've outlined, but it doesn't have a sound input. And since we vloggers love the sound of our own voices, you still need an A cam with an audio input. And one such setup I've been experimenting with on my dirt bike is this with the Insta360 ONE X2 paired with the Rode Wireless GO 2 recording my sound from the Rode Lavalier 2 microphone placed inside the helmet. This allows me to use the Insta GO 2 on the front of the helmet which is ideal for this sort of riding. Especially when I'm getting thrown around as it's so light you won't even notice the camera on the helmet and again Great ease of use with its one touch stop and start recording Insta have an ever-expanding huge array of mounts and accessories as well and here are a few of my favorites So here I've joined three rods together and it comes with the little mount to screw on top and it can give you this wonderful shot then there's the peak cap mount for when you're making those tedious how to clean your bike and all your chain vlogs and your hands are full. And then another favourite is the medallion mount, which keeps the camera very discreet when we go into a shop to purchase fuel or a bacon sandwich and want to record it just to prove that it is indeed us making the vlog and it's not some footage we nicked off the internet. There's even a set of ND filters for this tiny lens just to make the footage even more cinematic. One other thing I love is the legs fold out on the back of the case, so that enables you now to leave the camera on the side of the road for those special drive-by shots, previously unattainable because the car behind you thought that there was a Sony camera going cheap. OK, let's sum up. I still haven't mentioned what I think of the actual picture quality. I haven't had the opportunity to try it on a bright sunny day yet because I live in Ireland. But the tests I've done so far have made me realise that yet again its USP is its size and not the richness of picture. Don't get me wrong, it absolutely holds up, but when you edit it next to the Insta360 ONE X2 footage, you can see it's not fit to be a pimple on that camera's arse. However, with a maximum resolution of 2.5K in Pro mode, it's more than most of us will ever need. And of course I can't do 360 shots like the ONE X2 because it's not a 360 camera. But where I think this camera excels and will work wonderfully, certainly for me as a motor vlogger, is when it is paired with the ONE X2. I think that this is a very exciting setup and one I'll be adopting a lot more in the future. There is one other thing I should mention as well. Despite a lot of the modern action cameras these days overheating, this little camera doesn't, and I have put it through some quite rigorous testing throughout the course of this review. Anyway, fear not, because if it did overheat, we could always do this. Because it's fully waterproof, which is very handy for these rainy days out here in Ireland. I hope you enjoyed that brief insight into the Insta Go 2. 
The only limit to this camera's use is your imagination, and I can't wait to introduce it into my workflow. If you enjoyed this review, please consider subscribing. And if you really enjoyed this review and want to buy one of these cameras, please consider using the affiliate link in the blurb below. Once again, I'm Dave Perry for Wheelie Good TV. Over and out.